Tell us, Admiral. Why did you really quit Starfleet? Because it was no longer Starfleet. I'm sorry? Because it was no longer Starfleet. Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. This video is going to be kind of short and sweet, so I don't want to plug it all up with the usual begging for view likes and views and etc. You can find all of that in my description box. But as I mentioned in my last video, Star Trek The Final Bandai Masters Review, which you can find a link to in my description box, I am no longer going to review Star Trek other than fan films. In fact, I'm not even going to watch any other Star Trek aside from fan films. After 53 years with a franchise that has significantly influenced my life and in fact concludes one date that I consider more important than my own birthday, I have checked out of the franchise entirely. And this is because Star Trek is no longer Star Trek. One of my oldest friends, Fandai Master J. Marshall Pe Presnell, has penned the definitive reasons for this. And rather than attempt to use my own words or find my own words, I'm just going to say what Master Presnell had to say, which was this. In my mind, there are four distinct eras of Star Trek. One, the Roddenberry era, marked by boundless optimism for the future and a strong ethical and moral base. The Berman Pillar Moore era is the second, which was marked by strong optimism with heightened moral and ethical ambiguity and conflict. Number three is the Abrams era, which was marked by lens flares. Oh, sorry, just had to do it. And much of it was just an action adventure space war format without anything philosophical. And number four is the Kurtzman era which is marked by fundamental quantum deviation from the previous three eras, delving into significant philosophical nihilism. Here's the touchstone for me. Can I let kids watch it without having to worry about their well-being? The first three eras, while adult in content and provoking philosophical conversations, gets a yes. The Kurtzman era, hell no. For this alone, I have referred to Discovery and now Picard as, quote, some other sci-fi franchise that has the Star Trek logo mistakenly duct taped to the film cans, end quote. It's not Star Trek. As much as the next generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise are Star Trek. Star Trek is about something other than a starship and a crew. It's about an ideal the ideal that humanity will survive and do so in an enlightened and spectacular way. Our species will learn and grow and overcome most of the petty desires that we see today. We will meet other friends out there and learn from them and maybe they'll learn for us. But we will grow together and explore together to boldly go where no one has gone before. Kurt's trek is something else, something totally foreign to that a seedy underbelly of something duplicitous and awful. The violence, that's only a part of it, although it is a part of it. I mean, we've seen violence on Trek before, but never to the level of Picard's on-screen torture of Ichib. It was gratuitous and totally unnecessary to Seven's motivations. It could have easily been conveyed in another way. I do have to wonder if this was the episode that had Jonathan Frakes noticeably upset on set and allegedly refusing to come back to direct any more episodes. It is a total betrayal of what Trek is, so it wouldn't have surprised me. Sorry. It's not Star Trek. Not to me. The only Star Trek I see now that is current is Star Trek Continues, and it no longer continues, thanks to CBS. And that is what Fandai Master J. Marshall Presnell had to say, a Star Trek fan since 1966 when he was seven years old. He predates me just a few years. And I have to say, I heartily concur with all of that. I would only offer the following clarification because some people may not know what nihilism is, and it's key to understanding what Master Presnell wrote. Nihilism means that you think that life is without meaning, purpose, or intrinsic value, that morality does not exist, Knowledge is not possible. 
darkness, particularly the horrors of life, are normal and to be embraced, and that there is no hope for the future. Now, it is quite possible that a number of my Padawans would agree with this and wonder even why I might question it. Well, the reason is simple. It's not true. The only reason that you may believe it to be true is that you are part of two whole generations of Americans who were brainwashed by 12 years of compulsory education to believe that nihilism is normal. Nihilism is not normal. It's objectively not the case. By any possible measure, anyone in the Western world lives in the best possible world that has ever existed. Your future is boundlessly bright and getting brighter all the time. And if you think otherwise, then you have been brainwashed. The underlying theme of many of my reviews is that our young have been brainwashed into nihilism. That means that they have become largely indifferent to suffering, and they love to see explicit gore and horrific pain. And it is why we have some mass shootings in the U.S., despite the fact that access to guns is more limited now than at any time in human history, because nihilism precedes death. Now, if you're a Padawan who's been indoctrinated, I urge you to stop paying attention to your entertainment, your teachers, your press, and your government, because they are all brainwashing you to believe that the world is horrible and that your death is imminent. They're brainwashing you to make you insensitive to human suffering. They're brainwashing you to believe that you might as well shoot up a theater full of people since life has no value nor meaning because nihilism precedes death. All of this is why Star Trek isn't Star Trek anymore. You cannot have Star Trek with nihilism as a core tenet. And that's all that I have to say about that. I would certainly love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and sometimes to my friend's opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.